Welcome to Targa High Country 2016. Now in its 7th year, the stages in Victoria's High Country offer the field of 200 cars a range of unique challenges as they tackle 277 kilometres of the most picturesque and diverse roads Australia has to offer. Every stage has got its own character and you've got to approach it very differently and um, some are fast, some are slow, some are bumpy and that's what keeps bringing you back. Oh, Mount Bull is awesome. I mean, the road itself is, is one of my all-time favourites. It's just one of those you just can't wait to get going. And if you have a really nice day, it's just a fantastic bit of road. It's just got so much character, it's got a bit of everything. And to arrive up at the village, and, and there's always a good crowd hanging around up at the village, just a great atmosphere. The seventh running of Targa High Country kicked off with a field of 200 cars taking part in the official ceremonial start on top of Mount Buller. Targa High Country always will be very special to us because it, it took a long time to get the event up and uh, you know it was our first event out of, outside of Tasmania as a Targa event so it is very special and we've got just a great partnership with Mount Buller and Mansfield Shire in particular you know they just love the event, the region loved the event. It's the second biggest tarmac rally in the world now so it's been a great success for us. From the first corner the battle in GT2 was on with Matt Close and Cameron Reeves Porsche, the Viper of Mike Pritchard and Nathan Walker, the Cayman GT4 of Tim Hindy and Julie Winton Monet, the Mustang of Craig Dean and Kate Catford, the Corvette of Steve Johnson and Natalie Ford, the Lotus of Grant Denyer and Dale Moskett, and the Commodore of Toby Gill and Matt Smith, all trading top times throughout the day. Coming into the day's final stage up Mount Buller, the Viper of Pritchard and Walker held a slender one second lead. However, Close in the Porsche stole the show charging up the mountain to best the Viper and take a 12 second leap into day two. It doesn't get much better than ripping up Mount Buller in the GT3. It's uh, so neutral and Murray's a big favourite of mine, so uh, we've, we've always done fairly well on day two. So. It's been a pretty good day really. The first four stages that were competitive, uh, I think we were pretty close to clearing them, so there wasn't many seconds in that anyway. Uh, I imagine uh, Matt will get a big gain up Buller. We just had a comms issue. We swapped headphones, but I lost him and so get off notes but anyway. The first stage of the day that was real competition was really really like hang on to your seat and hang on to your car and hang on to everything actually because it was so rough and then after lunch we adjusted some suspension and made the car run a lot better. And yes the Shelby's a lot of fun, it's got a lot of power, the muscle car everyone wants to be in one, it's good fun. In the early modern class Alan Rowe and Mike Lloyd hit the ground running with a series of faster stage times in their Mitsubishi Evo. The pair Keen to make up for the disappointment of retiring while leading on the final day of Targa Tasmania, held a 51 second lead at day's end over Adam Kaplan and Alicia Penny in their BMW M3 CSL, with the Skyline GTR of Liam and Larry Howarth running third. Adam's behind us, you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep pushing along and doing what we're doing and I'm sure those guys will keep pushing hard as well. And there's certain stages that suit cars better than others and that sort of thing. Liam Horworth was really good up the hill today, anyway, we'll see how it goes over the weekend. The GT4 class quickly became a battle between Audi and Subaru, with Trevor McLeod and his new, former Targa Tasmania winning co-driver Steve Glennie leading the Audi of Barry Smith and Anthony McLaughlin, with Max Williams and Bruce Bush's similar TTRS holding down third. Really enjoyable day actually, yeah, good to get um, first day out of the way and I'm really happy that the, the little Subie's been able to hold out TTs. Well, we've had a pretty tough day actually, we've got a problem with the engine management system that, cops, that drops it into limp mode. I'm getting really, really good at grabbing neutral, turning it off, turning it on and putting it back and going again. <laughs> In TSD Trophy, Brian and Justin Marshall's Polo GTI leads the Falcon Ute of Darrell and Peter Marshall by four points. The results of this class are determined by how close the teams can get to a designated stage time that is based on averaging a specific speed over the course of a stage. In the 130km per hour speed limited GT Sports Trophy class, debutantes Anthony and Tony Rizzo lead the way in their Subaru WRX. From Jordan and Debbie Bridges' later model Subaru, and Adam Gosling and Ian Nobles' BMW M3. First time we're doing you know, the GT Sports Trophy uh, and uh, seem to be enjoying it. The corners are fast, the, the straights are hard, but yeah, it's good fun. This is our first year in this category. We've always done early modern. We're getting to know the other competitors, having a chat throughout the day, and it seems to be quite a competitive category. The sunshine at Mount Buller all but disappeared from the start of day two, with grey skies and a touch of snow greeting the cars as they set off to tackle the day's six stages, starting with another run down Mount Buller. 
As the day progressed, the roads dried and conditions were ideal with a battle in GT2 continuing to rage. Matt Close and Cameron Reeves' Porsche and Mike Pritchard and Nathan Walker's Viper broke free of the chasing pack, trading faster stage times over the course of the morning. Behind, Craig Dean and Kate Catford in the Mustang fought over third with Steve Johnson and Natalie Ford's Corvette. Going into the final day, both fights are separated by a mere second, promising a thrilling end to Targa High Country 2016. This morning I was worried about the wet, but uh, the Viper, I would not driven in the wet racing before and it was very pleasant in fact. So we pulled a bit of time out of Mount, which was fantastic, and then as the day dried, uh, he managed to pull a little bit back out of us again, but um, overall, I'm pretty pleased. It was pretty tricky early on this morning. It was always pretty hard when it's that cold to start, trying to get uh, temperature in our tyres. So. We just had a plan of going out pretty conservatively and just seeing what everyone else was doing in the wet. Mike did some really good times in the Viper in the wet. It obviously suited us if it's as dry as possible because we've got a very hard tyre and that comes into his own in the long stretches. So the main thing is we get out there and enjoy the roads really and uh, bring it home in one piece. The GT4 class continues to be a hard fought battle with Trevor McLeod and Steve Glenny holding a narrow 26 second lead over the Smith & McLaughlin Audi TTRS with the two other Neil Buckby Motorsport Subarus waiting in the wings behind. Yeah, it was an interesting day getting um, a bit of snow early on when we left the mountain and uh, first stage was very, uh, very wet and slippery. But as the day went on, confidence grew and until we got to the town stage. Competition's really tight. Hopefully we can hold a bit of a lead and enjoy our first podium. In early modern, the battle between the Evo of Alan Rowe and Mike Lloyd and their BMW of Adam Kaplan and Alicia Penny hotted up, with a pair trading times throughout the day. Kaplan impressively made time in the wet, driving his two-wheel drive BMW with absolute commitment in the challenging conditions. But Rowe clawed back time as the roads dried later in the day to end at the Mansfield Street stage with a 45 second lead. Slippery conditions, the four-wheel drive Evo should have been fantastic and I drove very poorly. But had to go over the other stages and by the end of the day it was a good day. Yeah, this morning was great. We were pretty quick on the first stage, uh, which was good. And then as the day sort of got hotter and dried out, we kind of started falling back again. Having a great time. The, the roads are amazing. The car's been fantastic and uh, enjoying myself. I love this stuff. I think Lloyd, the co-driver, might have said you're like a kid in a candy store. So uh, yeah, I certainly uh, enjoyed what I was doing. Lots of fun. The Rizzos continued their consistent run to lead the Sports GT Trophy in the Subaru WRX. And the battle in TSD Trophy continues with the VW of Brian and Justin Marshall holding a 16 point lead over the Ford Ute of Daryl and Peter Marshall. The event's been great, it's been pretty good except for snow in the morning but we didn't have to race in that fortunately so uh, but the rest of the day has been fantastic. Certainly we'll keep the competition tight tomorrow because of the long stages they're very hard to make time on so it should sort out the uh, men from the boys that one. As the crews completed day two the focus turned to Mansfield the famous street stage and Targa Fest. It's great to drive around a town street circuit, if you like. You know, when the public comes out in the numbers that they did to sort of watch it all, it, yeah, you feel real special. Ripper turnout. <laughs> yeah, sure. You can't, you can't wish for more than this. The final day of Targa High Country 2016 started with a whiteout. Mount Buller turning on its winter best and dumping a huge amount of fresh snow on the mountain. As people woke to their cars covered in snow, there was a sense of bemusement amongst the crews. Up at Mount Buller, you know, what Mother Nature brings is what Mother Nature brings and every day is a little bit different, but we thought we'd turn on a little bit of winter just so people get a taste of it today. Uh, this thing's not too bad in the wet, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Snow, however, is an unknown quantity. This is completely rad, isn't it? Wow. I feel like I've been Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. In case you're wondering, it's Speedy Dwarf. <laughs> plan is just to survive this marimba, just get through the horrible stuff and hopefully it finds off a bit later. So I don't expect to be anywhere near the leaderboard on this one. I was hoping for a little bit of dampness and I think it still could be damp down the mountain a little bit more. So that'll be great for us. Let's keep our tyres in track and a bit of pace. But other than that, no, it's good. <laughs> on the wet and foggy marimba stage, Mike Pritchard and Nathan Walker pushed the Viper hard, making use of their soft compound tyres to convert their one second deficit into a 15 second lead. In the wet, Matt Close and Cameron Reeves had no response. However, as the roads dried, the crew turned the tables on the Viper, setting a series of faster stage times to take back the lead after the Jamison stage. Behind, the race for third also intensified 
with Steve Johnson and Natalie Ford in the Corvette, and Craig Dean and Kate Catford in the Mustang fighting hard. In early modern, Alan Rowe found time on the wet run down Marimba and pushed on through the day's stages to take early modern honours with co-driver Mike Lloyd. Adam Kaplan and Alicia Penny's BMW kept the pair honest, finishing 1 minute and 31 seconds behind, with Liam and Larry Howitz's 1995 Nissan GTR rounding out the podium. All in all, we've had a great weekend. The cars worked really well, been reliable. Lloydy on the notes is uh, fantastic. Wouldn't be able to do it without him, that's for sure. And my service crew, of course, they're fantastic. In GT4, the order was shuffled when Barry Smith and Anthony McLaughlin's Audi TTRS was forced to retire following an incident. This meant the podium was a Subaru whitewash with Trevor McLeod and Steve Glennie first, Crichton Lewis and Adam Kudra second, and Nathan and Nick Stokes in third, a trifecta for the Neil Buckby Motorsport team. Oh, it was a great end to the event. Yeah, we're really happy. Had a couple under our belt now and yeah. really happy to get on the podium. Uh, Trev drove very well, very smooth. He found some good rhythm throughout the day and um, finished off pretty strongly. To have a one, two, three here for the Buckby crew is, is amazing and testament to the work, the crew, that they, uh, how well they prepare their cars. We've made a few adjustments to the car this morning. It was obviously very cold and wet and took it easy. Once we got down the bottom and it dried out, we made a few more changes and kept going. So very, very happy. First time we've ever had one, two and three as a, as a team. In GT Sports Trophy, husband and wife duo Anthony and Tony Rizzo continued their great form, taking their Subaru WRX to an emphatic victory over the fast-finishing James Bullock and Ben Dearlove in their Porsche 911 GT3, with Jordan and Debbie Bridge third in their Subaru. Seven years it's been for us and before we had these two, and uh, we've been chasing a podium ever since, so we're very excited to, to finally have made it. It was a tough run, we had to nurse the car, we had the Porsche behind us, we knew we had a lead on him. If he caught us, it was a different game for us. Uh, we were glad to not see him in our rear vision mirror when we got to the top. The TSD trophy class was taken home by Brian and Justin Marshall. The Polo GTI crew doing enough to hold off Daryl and Peter Marshall's Ford Pursuit Ute, with Geoffrey Morton and Jared Kershaw's Lotus Elise finishing third. Yeah, we made every stage pretty close to time, so, uh, and we made it to the end. That's the best part. Fantastic. Today was a really good day. We just kept doing our thing. Uh, we just really had to make sure that we kept the pressure on the leaders and they didn't crack. So we're really pleased with our job though. In GT2, Close pushed the Porsche hard over the afternoon, extending his margin on every stage. In the end, he and Cameron Reeves finished 59 seconds clear of Pritchard and Walker's Viper, claiming the top step on the podium. The order in the battle for third swapped throughout the day until Craig Dean drove the 40km Jamison stage at maximum attack putting enough time between he and the Corvette to claim the final spot on the podium. We had a bit of a plan and we stuck to it. Things could have been different out of in a whole wet day because we, we, we struggled with a bit of tyre temp. But Mike has shown to be very fast in the wet with a softer tyre and the, the Viper certainly pushed down the power in the wet. They're hard stages, they're difficult stages. Matt drove them really well. It's just one of those things of how hard to push and how not how hard not to push, but the car looked after us, Matt drove really well, so just a good day. I'm pretty happy to be here actually. Brake master cylinders decided to give us some grief, and so I didn't have much of a brake pedal after the first stage this morning. So it was a very gentle come home, unfortunately. Next time. Really excited. We were uh, had a bit of a bad start this morning, and uh, things just weren't going right, but did a few adjustments, pulled myself together, and Kate called wonderful. It was a bit of a challenge, but I did keep him in line. Had to be hot on the notes because we were really pushing hard on the on the last run up there on Eildon. So it was a great stage. Craig did an awesome job. A lot of fun. 